Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. I'm not sure how the audio is going to come out, because my microphone's broken, so until I get a replacement, which I will try to do tomorrow, I will uh, be using a backup mic, and uh, we'll, s we'll see how well that sounds. But um, it, can't <laughs> it could be worse, I could be having jingles levels of echo problems. <laughs> Fortunately I don't have those right now. Anyway, um, we are back in the Moskva. Uh, why are we back in the Moskva? Well, last time I reviewed the Moskva I was kind of expecting people to be, well, to have a bit of backlash on that to be honest, because I know that a lot of people like the Moskva and um, I didn't particularly. And I think the Moskva has some relatively severe drawbacks. So uh, thanks first of all for all the notes and hints and suggestions in the comments and for keeping it civil and not just, you know, ranting and raving. But um, uh, what I've done today is set her up slightly differently because I wanted to see what, we, what the ship could do if you, well, max her out, especially around the APCS for better armor-piercing penetration. We'll get to that in a second, but before we do that, uh, let me have a quick word around uh, what a cruiser is, or what is the operational purpose of a cruiser in this game. Uh, now, at least in my opinion, uh, cruisers have several roles that they need to play in order to be able to carry the team. Um, cruisers should be able to dominate objectives using their speed and their maneuverability and use, using their ability to get into cover and, uh, you know, s defend points that give you a score income. So, for example, in a center cap map with a cruiser, you would want to be able to maneuver either around the flanks but within the range of the capture circle and you want uh, as a second step you want to provide support to your team especially the battleships because you have rapid firing guns which are usually very capable of dealing with enemy destroyers uh, oftentimes cruisers now not all cruisers are made the same way right so we, we have uh, th things that are effectively large destroyers like uh, like a minotaur or uh, all the way up to uh, things that are sort of almost battleships or like battle cruisers like the Hindenburg uh, and maybe also this thing or even like super cruisers with uh, 300 millimeter guns and, and higher but without necessarily having battleship armor. So uh, as a cruiser you want to be able to fulfill at least basically fulfill these important roles that you're able to deal with enemy with enemy destroyers and also lend a hand with your rapid firing guns for example and setting fires in enemy battleships or just dealing damage uh, being being maneuverable being where you need it to be because battleships don't maneuver around very quickly and uh, support your your heavy hitters use uh, oftentimes cruisers have support skills like radars like defensive a and these kind of things so how does the Moskva fit into this picture? Well, this thing isn't called Battleship Moskva for nothing, uh, because it, li it is literally the size of a battleship without having the actual armor of the battleship, or the, at least in the, in the previous play, play games that I've played, without having the firepower of a battleship and without having the utility of a cruiser, because while the Moskva is very quick, the Moskva is also very, very large and uh, can be focused down very quickly. So the Moskva is a very, very single minded, single focused cruiser, such that uh, there's only one way to play the Moskva really, and that is at maximum range. Because your uh, at maximum range and you absolutely positively need the armor piercing cap shell and the skill. Without the captain skill I feel the guns are really, at least for me they were disappointing. I've played the Hindenburg's guns without the, the, the APCS and they felt a lot more punchy than these things. Uh, with the APCS uh, it makes a world of a difference because it just gets it into that sweet spot. Anyway, um, let's have a very quick look at the setup. So I have put a I have put a Kuznetsov. That was a suggestion because I think um, what was that he he gets? Uh, yeah, he he gets some he gets some unique skills. So he does get the um, the sixth sense with which in a ship the size of this and the need, the absolute need to be very very careful with being shot at by enemy battleships is a very useful skill to have same as in something like the minotaur 
He does get the improved artillery maintenance, which gives us better dispersion and traverse speed with as long as we have hit points. And the traverse speed especially is, is a boon because uh, the Moskva's guns, while only 220 millimeter, turn like battleship turrets. I have taken the marksman instead of the improved, uh, um, improved repair kit cooldown time. Uh, but he also gets the Honor Seeker for uh, additional damage and uh, the Bulletproof skill, which is unique to Kuznetsov, which uh, just generally gives you effectively 5% uh, additional armor. Oh, it's just generally damage reduction. So uh, these are all very, very useful skills to have uh, on, a, on, a ship that, on a ship like that. I have obviously put the, uh, the Historical Camo on, which gives us additional hit points, more range, better dispersion. And I've put actually premium consumables in here. So the advanced repair kit and the advanced damage control. So especially the advanced repair kit gives you 16.7% of your max HP, whereas the regular only gives you 14.3. So you do get additional hit points back. And with a ship that has a relatively large hit pool to begin with, although she doesn't have the greatest of armors, it means that uh, you can actually heal back a lot of, a, a lot of actual HP in that ship using that particular thing. Other than that, it's the same setup. So I do have, I do still have the main battery mod one and the propulsion and the steering. So uh, let's, let's get into some games where I think I can play the Moskva to her strength, sort of, but, and talk a little bit more about what this means for me as a cruiser. And while I still maintain that this is as a cruiser role, in my opinion, not the best ship. In the first battle, it's a 5v5. We're up against Double Yamato, Nevsky, Goliath, and a Halland. Now, we are playing on Epicenter and uh, on the chain map. And once again, one of the problems that, or one of the expectations that I would have against the cruiser would be to take a position, uh, like to take an island cover position, maybe somewhere on a flank, and be able to, uh, you know, threaten that. So, what we're going to do here is not really do that at first, but we are going to stand back and we're going to fight at max range. Now, what I, I said about the APCS it, to make a world of a difference. Uh, you can, you can hit battleship weak spots if they allow you to do so. If they are sitting stationary at their positions and allow you to hit their bows and sterns reliably. And with the APCS, these armor piercing shells do a lot of damage. It, it really makes all the difference to have that skill on it. We do also have a Smolensk on our team. So um, as you know, the team with the most Smolensks in the game usually wins. Um, we, we can probably do this. But uh, as you can see, the enemy destroyer, we don't have any destroyers of our own. The enemy destroyer uh, captures. The other thing is that if you're shooting at destroyers at max range with the APCS, you will actually do very reliable um, full penetrations. Uh, of course, if, if they are getting any closer than I think, I would say probably about nine kilometers, then um, then you're not. So I, I am I'm staying here. I am ha I have to stay in the outer ring. I'm not sure why the Zhao is staying here because the Zhao should have a much better um, concealment than me. But um, I am staying. I am standing back and um, not moving forward, not moving into another position because I, I get spotted and I get immediately targeted. That's probably one of the bots. Uh, so there's a, there's a bot Zhao, um, but bots should be targeting by proximity. So I am hanging back in the rear, and uh, there's some shell, shells incoming from the Yamato. I'm not sure if... No, these aren't meant for me. He's uh, firing at the bots. Uh, bot Zhao is targeting me, and then briefly there were two ships targeting me. But yeah, I, I'm reversing. I'm getting... I'm staying in the outer in the outer ring at the back and letting my team take... I, I'm effectively staying where the battleships are. And that, that's sort of where it makes sense with the... Uh, Battleship Moskva <laughs> moniker that this thing sort of has. Okay, the Halland is spotted, so I'm going to stop farming the bot and see if we can do something about this guy. Now, he doesn't seem to be all too, fa uh, too fast, and he is at 13 kilometers, um, but I want to get the range first. Now I'm using the precise aim because I see that he's actually um, moving inwards towards the center cup, and he has stopped. Now why, why, in, the, why in the world does, does, would you stop in a destroyer in full view of a spotted Moskva? Because that's what happens. If he's maneuvering, uh, I have not. I have not a great chance of hitting him. Now he's giving me broadside again after I've just blapped half his health away. So I can. I can almost. Uh, I can. I almost got him. Uh, he's sailing around at uh, what looks like half speed. Uh, 
and um, is sailing in circles there. So I'm, I'm not sure what what, uh, what the uh, great idea is, but uh, I have underestimated his. I think he's speed, he's sped up now. So yeah, he's gone undetected. I've underestimated the speed at this range. So my point being that if the destroyer gives you the opportunity, oh, we got him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If the destroyer gives you the opportunity by doing something stupid, like sailing in a straight line for 20 seconds flat out, and there come some Yamato shots, but I don't think these were meant for me. Smolensk is down, that's, that's bad. Um, and uh, yeah, at, at this point I need, to, I need to move forward, because we are uh, we're even on kills and we're behind on points, and no one else is going to do it. There's the Zhao, but he doesn't look like he's inclined. So now I'm, I'm, I'm sailing a Moskva into the center cup. Now this destroyer, by all means and purposes, should not have been dead at this point. And I am trying as much as possible to stay undetected, because I've got Yamatos on both sides. Uh, this is extremely easy for me to die here. If these two Yamatos are paying any attention, so I, I just really want to tip my nose into the center cup and then go straight over reverse, because I am outflanked here by both Yamatos, and I'm immedi immediately targeted by two people. So. Um, I am, I am giving broadside to the Yamato that's further away because I might have better chances of, um, of dodging his shots. And I am firing at the Yamato that is on my left. And as you can see, with the APCS, I am actually doing a reasonable amount of damage. Now, if these guys could shoot, <laughs> I'd be in real trouble. But uh, they, are, they, they remain stationary instead of pushing. And that Yamato is just taking a lot of damage here. The, the Yamato on the, on the other side, however, um, I'm not sure why I am not dead yet, but uh, I have managed to, to get my objective. Now the Zhao is trying the same thing. Oh, there come the Yamato shots. And I got lucky there um, that, that these didn't, didn't come in on target. So uh, I'm, I'm backing out again. I, I captured the center cup, which I shouldn't, in all intents and purposes, have been able to do because I only was able to do that because that Holland at the beginning effectively threw a ship away. And, uh, uh, and because these two Yamatos couldn't decide uh, to focus me down quickly enough. So Nevsky takes out the Zhao, and, uh, which means we're one kill down, but we are now holding the center cup. And now I can back away again and play at maximum range. But you, 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 see, how, you see what I'm trying to say, right? How this battle is turned out. Has, it's not down to any kind of skilled plays that I've done. It's currently down to the fact that the enemy team allows me to do this. I should, by all intents and purposes, not have been able to do this. Now I'm bow in towards the Yamato at my right, because uh, I have got the island between myself and the other Yamato, and that other Yamato also seems to have better things to do than shoot at me at this point. But I can, uh, you know, get some shots off at him and see if I can take him down. And uh, I think he's going to move forward, so I'm, tar I'm targeting center, so that by the time my shells get there, he's actu they're actually hitting his rear section, and there he's down. Okay. So now I only have one Yamato to shoot at, and I still don't understand why that Yamato over there is sitting there. He could have rushed me in the last minute and completely obliterated me. You see, even with the um, with the relatively untargeted long-range fire, I'm um, I'm taking a lot of damage. But because of the premium heal, I'm also able to heal a lot of damage back. So I am able to do this, and now see if I can get the Nevsky dead. Because we're even on kills, but we are ahead on points. I don't know what the the health of my the battleship right next to me there is. And once again, the Yamato there is 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 scatter shotting. Oh, that's that's a friendly Yamato. Okay, is it? I'm not sure. I only see the other one back there. But um, unless that battleship next to me is on low hit points, there's no reason for that Yamato over there to just sit there still broadside on, 10 km away, and uh, casually lob shots in my direction. I have no torpedoes. There's no threat for him. He could lit he's on full health. He could literally just have, at any point in time in the last two minutes, uh, put the ship in forward, um, or even just sail around the island. I mean, I'm bow in towards that thing. Just don't try to hit me while I'm sitting here bow in. You have a bad chance of hitting me. Uh, just, just move the ship forward, sail around the island, blood me in the side, uh, two shot, two salvos, and that was it. I have no torpedoes to defend myself with. I don't have, a, I don't have an awful lot of, of DPM, and um, at worst you're taking some some shots from the other battleships. But by now it's too late, and he keeps wasting his his shots at me while I'm now I'm in reverse and in a bow in uh, bow in Moscow. So. Um, while we are winning, while we are in the process of winning this on points, and uh, there's that Nevsky, but I, <laughs> I couldn't grab him anymore. Uh, the only reason we, we were able to do this is because the enemy team let me do this. The Holland at the beginning decided to sit still at the, uh, in, in full range of an extremely precise long-range cruiser like the Moskva. Uh, the, I got lucky with the, the shot at the Holland, at the blind shot. The Yamatos have not focused their fire or moved at all in order to get into uh, to jockey for a better position. So 
this is one thing like yes you can do this and if the enemy team allows you to do this to play to your strength like this then you can actually be relatively successful let's get into get into a second battle and here we are playing against uh, it's again 5v5 we're playing against republic yamato wooster shima and gearing now the other thing that i mentioned earlier and let's get going the other thing that i mentioned earlier is that uh, cruisers should be able to deal with destroyers the thing with uh, large with uh, heavy cruisers and especially those with strong ap and with the apcs this is a very strong ap uh, is that you need to switch uh, ammo types so one once I, th I think with this ship the magical number is probably around nine kilometers so once you're starting to shoot at ships closer than nine kilometers you will start to massively over penetrate with the ap and only do 25 percent of damage but anyway, um, I am sort of, once again, going to play effectively from the baseline. I mean, I do have the range for that. It's just that if a destroyer, um, if a destroyer plays at mid-range or at long range and is actively dodging, I have no way of actually hitting them. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to position ourselves here, sort of. At ba uh, we don't have to be afraid of the carrier because it's a bot. And um, uh, we'll see where our own team is going. So it's either Shima or Gearing that's coming down this uh, this side of the map. There, there is a bot which is going to go scouting. So uh, at least that's one thing bots are useful for. So once again we wait. Now I am spotted. Uh, two people, I don't see who's spotting me. So that's Gearing. That's why I'm switching over to high explosive. Or, or Shimakaze. There's the smoke screen. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I have no idea why he's smoking up there. There's no reason for him to smoke up there. Uh, he's not on any th on any th in any threat. So this tells me something already. Uh, while I'm just moving forward to dodge any eventual torpedoes that might have been coming for me, but I, th I don't I don't know what the exact torpedo range is. A couple of blind shots out, and the carrier is coming. So uh, I am going to use the AA, but the AA on the Moskva isn't the greatest. Uh, still, still something I can work with. There's also Worcester. So it tells me something about that destroyer player over there, because if he smokes up needlessly. Uh, this far away from anything, there's an enemy Yamato, so I do not want to sit here. Okay, it's the gearing. Um, and at this range, 9.6 kilo, kilometer AP, a precise aim, uh, that might that might hurt if it if it, got, it hits on target. But um, you know, the gearing actually turned, not maybe to dodge my shells, maybe not. I'm not sure, but uh, well, that that didn't hit. So I know that there's gearing and Wooster down here, and there's Yamato. So uh, with the Yamato, I need to be bow in, and I, I can't push. Obviously, I need to hold this this flank. So I need to adjust my aim to hit his bow section, so lead a little bit more, depending on how far away that thing is, and hold uh, hold this flank because I'm gonna have gearing and Wooster coming down here. Okay, gearing is spotted again. So let's try that once more and see if we can get some shots in. Okay, I'm gonna have to blind shoot again, and there's also the Wooster. Now. Oh, uh, we got five hits in. Are we actually over penetrating the gearing even at this range? So uh, further away we need to be <laughs> if if we want to if we want to get reliable hits in on that thing. Okay, uh, there comes the gearing around the corner. So he, he's not shooting at me, so he's not actively targeting me. There's also the Worcester coming around the corner. Um, and once again, the ship's actually maneuvering, so not really an awful lot going to happen. And he's, he ran into an island, and he's smoking up again. I'm not sure why, but uh, he decides he wants to smoke up. And yeah, eight kilometers, I need to switch over to the high explosive if I want to do anything about the gearing. Now, is the gearing sitting still in his smoke? I'm still on the armor piercing, just to, to determine if he's sitting still in there, and if it's worth shooting at him. Nah, I've got the Worcester to shoot at, so I might as well just start shooting at that thing. And um, the Worcester, while seeing me, decides not to do anything about me. Uh, the same with the gearing. So once again, the enemy team is letting me play here. There come some torpedoes. I'm not sure what these were aimed at, but everyone seems to be focusing on the battleship next to me. I don't know what that is, but um, uh, it, 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 no, now I know what it was. It was the Bourgogne. Okay, so the Bourgogne, uh, fair enough. The Bourgogne was on low health, and now the Bourgogne is gone. So <laughs> it's a gone Bourgogne. Uh, so a couple more shots out at the gearing. And yes, the gearing started moving forward, so I've hit his rear section. I do need to get the hits in at the center section. So if this guy, if he would have, if he would be holding still, that would be much appreciated. Uh, nope, too close, overpens. Uh, not controlling a single fire, but getting the island between myself and gearing, just in case. I don't think he's got torpedoes away, but I am now obviously under fire also from the Worcester. Now, the Worcester is in it's in firing range for me, and I can use the Damac the, uh, the Damacon here because I'm unspotted because the island's between. But I need to I need to disengage because there's a gearing coming. Gearings have torpedoes, and I don't. 
Now, the Worcester is rushing, and uh, why is he firing high explosive at me? Uh, if, you're, if, you, if you're at this range um, in a Worcester and you're shooting an enemy cruiser, use the armor piercing. You're gonna do an awful lot more damage to me than with the, with the high explosive. Yes, you're gonna set a fire. Uh, yes, it's going to do some damage, but you are um, you are at, at, at either either play at max range and pepper me with high explosive, or play at close range and um, and uh, shred with the armor piercing. I mean, you could even go and and use the, the AG first and then the AP, but um, well, once you've got the fires going. But yeah, he's he's determined to burn me down and has a lot of lost a lot of health. But now I'm being rushed by gearing, so uh, now th they they are also they're not coordinating this right. The Worcester is now. Uh, is not distracting me anymore because the, the Worcester has now disengaged, which means now I have to deal with gearing. That's why I'm back at the high explosive at this point. Oh, there comes the Worcester again. So, fair enough. Okay. High explosive hits on the gearing. Um, and the gearing is sitting there, full on broadside. He knows I'm shooting high explosive. He is not rushing me. He is trying to burn me down in a gearing while sitting at five, uh, five kilometer distance. So, um, I'm not sure what he's trying to do, but I'm now going full reverse because he looks like he just dropped his torpedoes because he smoked up. And I don't need a radar to know where he is because he keeps firing his guns, so that's not our dead gear. Uh, and there come the torpedoes as predicted. Now the gearing could have easily rushed me here because I don't have any torpedoes. And I don't have, um, I don't have a way of killing him fast enough at close range. I would have been dead. Or the booster, when they did the, the, the first run, could have done a lot more damage. But now the booster is alone, which means he's got my undivided attention. And now he's trying to play at max range, but he is giving me flat broadside while um, turning around trying to kite. So uh, that's going to work for him uh, because he disengaged. He, he went undetected. He went out of spotting range. And uh, so that, but he didn't get through. And while we are two kills behind, one of our destroyers is sitting in, sitting in the cup, and that's a bot carrier. <laughs> So I don't know if the Wooster is rushing back to the cap. Uh, I don't think he's got a chance in hell to get there. Um, I am detected. Somebody p targeted me for a second there. I'm not sure if it was the carrier or the Wooster. Um, it shouldn't be the carrier. It was probably the Wooster. Now the Wooster is spotted uh, by the friendly carrier. So uh, once again, I get to actually shoot at that thing. And I think he's in a turn, so he is trying to get back. But at, at, at a 12 kilometer range duel, with a fully broadsiding Wooster, I have the advantage. So if he's trying to kill me, um, well, uh, I don't think it, I, I don't know if I got him still at the end there. No, I think there's still shells coming in. But we capped them out and we won against all odds because I was able to hold that flank. But I was only able to hold that flank because the enemy team allowed me to do that, and I had to pull all the tricks to make it happen. <laughs> right? It's. Um, it, it, you know, in, in a different ship, in a different cruiser, this might have th this might have been easier. So, in summary, uh, the Moskva with the a without the APCS, in my opinion, is a below average tier ten cruiser, flat out like that. With the APCS and uh, and the enemy team allowing you to to target them and not focusing you, uh, and you playing only at range is workable. She can defend herself in a pinch if the enemy team lets you. But uh, the thing that's very difficult in the Moskva is to take any kind of forward position and to help dominate any kind of capture points or anything. You are reliant on your team to, to pull a win. You are reliant on your team to do things like get, grabbing the capture points. And you have to support your team from the, from the distance, from the rear, at max range, uh, dodge battleship shells and um, then you can play relatively successfully but that's the only way you can you can't if the situation requires a push and uh, in, in say for example a Hindenburg uh, you can do this because you, you can get into a capture circle and you can't just be rushed by a destroyer you have guns that you have gun turrets that can actually turn so you can't be outflanked by a Worcester at close range and just shred it to bits by um, using the armor piercing because you also have torpedoes. You can rush a battleship in, in a pinch in a Hindenburg because you have the, you have the uh, DPS with that thing. Uh, there are a lot of, a lot of things that, that you can do in these more versatile cruisers that you can't do in something like the Moskva. So it works under certain circumstances and with a maximum setup she works reasonably well. With anything else, I would still maintain that I'm not a huge fan of this ship. But if this is your playstyle and you like being in a more rapid firing ship at max range and you like 
you know, you like that sort of thing and you want to invest into getting a 12 point captain into this ship and maybe a historical camo onto it, then it, it can work. Right? Just don't be disappointed um, if, you're, if your team doesn't play the objective, it's going to be really difficult for you to compensate. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.